Hey, what's shaking? The Animal Man here. Today we're going to do a video on a way to heat your home in an emergency with a catalytic space heater. And this is it. This is mine from when I was a kid. I still have it. It's a Coleman Power Cat. It's also called the Coleman Pro Cat. And I don't even know if they make this anymore, but you can find similar ones all over the internet and stores everywhere, made by Mr. Heater and some other, some other brands also. But they're great because they have a catalytic burner. They don't have a flame, which means it's much, much safer. It burns at a lower temperature than a flame, what I think it burns at about 850 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's still enough to burn you or set things on fire, but not as much of a hazard. And the lack of a flame definitely helps. So we're going to talk about how to keep it safe later on. For now, I'm going to show you how to use this. I'm going to take it out of the box here. This is a 3000 BTU burner, which, I mean, it's not going to replace your radiator but I mean it's, it's not bad either and this is not going to heat your whole home it's going to heat one room of your home so if there's an emergency powers out you have no heat you put blankets you thumbtack or nail blankets up in the hallway you know to cover the doors or whatever and keep all the heat in one area probably your living room or your den where everyone's going to want to hang out together where it's comfortable and you have this in there keep you guys warm there so here it is so this one is cool because it has a built-in fan to circulate the air better so you get more bang for your buck with the heat here. Uh, but it does need D batteries. There's a way around that. We'll get to that in a minute. But it takes two D batteries. The fan burns for, not burns, it runs for about 18 to 20 hours. Uh, then you have to get new batteries. And it takes these one pound propane canisters that are sold all over the place everywhere. Screws right in there. It's got electronic ignition. It's got switch for the fan back here and the, adjust, the adjustment valve for the heat output. And this is where the burner is, that's your burner. This sits right on the floor like that. So, I'm going to show you how to hook this up. One of these uh, propane canisters will last anywhere from 7 to 8 hours, which is, is, is a good amount of time because think about like if you have a fire going, you've got to tend to fire constantly, usually. So I'm going to turn this all the way on to light, hold it on there, I'm going to push the igniter. There it is. You hold on the ignite for about 10 seconds, then let go of it, put it to on. And there it is, it's cranking, it's pretty quiet. There it is for you. And it's going, it feels nice. And you can adjust the output of this. It'll last seven or eight hours when it's on high. That's a little bit longer on low. Now, if you want to circulate the air a little bit more, you just turn the fan on. There it goes. A little bit louder with the fan. Not that loud though. And there it is. Now I've used this in my tent, and my tent's big. My tent's probably 8 by 12, and it got that tent up to 70 degrees, and it was about 40 degrees outside. And it did that pretty quickly, so that was nice. And that's a, and that's a tent with uh, no insulation and, and screen everywhere. So a house this would do much better in, in, a, in a larger room too. Okay, now let's talk safety. So. Carbon monoxide is first up. Turns out because it's a catalytic heater, almost zero, virtually zero carbon monoxide is given off. You don't have to worry about that. As a matter of fact, if there's a blue flame on a propane appliance, there's also virtually zero carbon monoxide. When you have to worry is when there's a flame like a normal fire that has an orange flame. That means it's not totally combusting the fuel and there's going to be carbon monoxide being created. But this, you don't have to worry about it. So check. You should have a battery powered carbon monoxide detector for an emergency in your house anyway and uh, have that nearby, but this should not be giving any off if it's working properly. It also combusts at a much lower temperature than normal flame. This only burns at about 850 degrees because it's catalytic. It's not a benefit of having this type of heater. Um, oxygen is what you have to worry about. Just like we do, you know, we consume oxygen, fire consumes oxygen. This is going to burn oxygen and suck up all the oxygen from your home. So you need to have some vent nearby to give it some air, give it some fresh air, give yourself some fresh air too. If you're in an emergency in the winter where you're trying to keep the house warm, what you would want to do is take an area like the living room or the den where everybody likes to hang out and there's lots of room and you would hang um, blankets or sleeping bags or whatever you have, comforters, you know, with thumbtacks or nail them to the hallways put them over the doors, whatever, to keep all the air in this area. Just heat this area where you guys are. Um, but that also means there's less air coming in. 
So what you do is you crack the window that's right near the heater. If I'm going to have it in my living room right here, I'm going to put this in the corner. I'm going to use the window right near it. I'm going to crack the bottom of the window. Not the top because heat rises. All the heat that you're trying to keep in here is going to go out the window, right? So you crack the bottom a little bit. And you want the window to be near the heater because if you're going to crack the window across the room or on the other end of the house, what's going to happen is just this one area of the heater is going to be warm and all the cold air from that window is going to come across the whole house and the rest of the house will be cold. So very, very important tip to know. Crack the window right, near, right next to the heater. Okay, so you've got carbon monoxide covered, we've got oxygen covered to be safe. Now what you have to worry about is the knockover hazard. This can get bumped and knocked over. If your whole family's hanging out in the living room together, there's a lot going on. If, you're, if you have a dog or a cat or whatever, they're going to be playing in here too, hanging out. These can get bumped, knocked over. That's a fire hazard. Or they can get smushed, you know, bumped and smushed up against things like the couch or sleeping bags or whatever. And those can get set on fire or at least melted. And in an emergency, there might not be first responders available. If there's a blizzard, two feet of snow, no ambulance is going to get here. Fire department's not going to get here. So you have to be a lot more careful in these situations. So here's an idea that I came up with that's awesome to make this a lot safer. It's not going to have anything coming near it. It's not going to get uh, knocked over. Let me show you this. I use a dog kennel. Tons of people I know have these. It's a fold-up dog crate. And people keep them in the closet, in the back room. I keep this in my attic. And it just folds out. It's going to be loud for a second. I'm sorry. It folds out. Here's the front. And it just pops into place. Pops into place. You can get these at any pet shop, but also they're at yard sales. I see them at yard sales all the time. And um, here's the front door. It's got a plastic tray that's removable. It's got a little door down here. We're going to slide the tray out. And we don't need the tray. We're going to just put it aside. Close that back up. Now we're going to open the door. Now, let me show you the bottom. The mesh on the sides is, is pretty small, but look at the mesh on the bottom. You can see that it's about 8 inches by 4 inches. The mesh here is much larger. And we're going to use that. We're going to zip tie our catalytic heater to the bottom of this on the inside. And we're going to zip tie it with the front of the heater where the, where the output is facing the back. That way when we want to start this and adjust it, we can just open the door of the, of the kennel here and adjust it. This is going to be tricky for me to do on camera with one hand holding this up by myself, but I'm going to try to do it. And uh, you should probably use four zip ties. Just four 10 inch, think of 10 inch, black zip ties. And once you get the first one or two, it's, it's going to be easier. I'm going to put it through this is great because it's got these vents on the side that are the perfect size for the zip ties to fit through. There, everything's nice and tight. Let's close this. I'll put it right side up for you. That's what we're at. You can see that now. It's right in the center. And if you want to turn it on or adjust it, it's off in the dog crate. Now, no matter what happens now, things are not going to get smushed against this. It's not going to get knocked over. I mean, unless you guys are having a uh, WWF, WCW re wrestling match in the living room, it's not going to get knocked over. So, there we go. Nice and sturdy. Now, when you want to adjust it, you just go back here, turn it to light. Boom. It's on. It's not going to heat anything up. Turn the fan on. Turn the fan off. Whatever you want. I'm going to turn it off. And then, to make sure no dogs, no cats, whatever goes in the air, when you're done adjusting it, turning it on, you always just shut the kennel, right? So there it is. So there's my setup. Now, here's something else to think about. You need to have lots of those propane canisters. Each one lasts about eight hours. So you burn through maybe three of those in a day, right? 8, 16, 24. <laughs> That's a lot. Some outages, you know, I mean, you should be prepared for outages of two to three days minimum. Some last longer. That's a lot of those canisters to go through. Um, so one option, which a lot of people don't like, is to take one of these big ones, a big 20-pounder from your grill. Almost everyone that I know has got a grill. And you should have one of these handy. Make sure 
in the winter, you have your grill available to you. You don't want it across the yard with snow banks and everything like that. You want it near the house so you can just shovel out the door and grab it if you need to for emergency cooking or emergency heating like this if you want to. And also, most people think about filling their propane canisters in the springtime when it's time to use the grill outside. Fill it in the fall. That way it's available for emergency use in the winter if you need it. That's when to fill your canisters. So the way to use one of these with this is with an adapter hose. I think you can buy one of these for like 20 bucks. And this is an adapter, and this end of it screws into where the little one pound tank goes. And then this end just connects to your propane tank. And the reason why a lot of people don't like these is because they can be leaks. It's a lot more propane to have indoors, and if there's a leak, it's a lot more to leak out. That's going to be a hazard. If one of those one pounders is leaking, you know, not that much propane can possibly leak out. I mean, a pound is a lot, but 20 pounds is a lot more. So these are, you know, a lot more to think about and worry about. So what a lot of people do is they get an extra long one of these. They sell 10-foot ones of these. This one's only about 4 foot. But they sell 10-foot ones, and people will have the tank out in their screen porch or in the dormer of their house or something like that, um, the entranceway to their house. So it's not in the main house, and they'll just have the hose running through, and they'll shove, you know, insulation or or towels in the crack of the door just have the hose going through and the heater will be inside the house so that's one way to do it too this is also good to have they sell gas gauges for these that screw on if they can get these for like 10 bucks at any hardware store sporting goods store or on Amazon probably tells you how much is in the tank I mean you can pick them up and feel how heavy they are but this is a visual thing much easier to see you know how you're doing are you good or are you not some tanks come with them built in one of my tanks that I have has built into it, but the rest of them I have to screw this on. So this screws on, and then this screws on to that, and you can tell how much gas you've got. Now for the D batteries, let's get this out of the way. The D batteries last 18 to 20 hours, which is a lot longer than the propane one pound tank lasts. But eventually you're gonna run out, and if it's a longer outage, you're gonna go start burning through batteries. So you might wanna get rechargeable Ds, or, have adapters. There is a plug on the bottom of that, and this will plug into one of these. And uh, they sell these on the internet, but I made these by splicing things together. I keep all my old cell phone cords, cords for everything. I have a whole rubber made bit of them at my workshop. So this one fits the jack on the bottom of this. This is for a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket for the car. This one is for a wall, a wall plug. And I think it's 3 volt. Yeah, it's 2D, so it's 3 volts. I don't have to look. 3 volts. So these are 3 volts. You have to make sure this is the right size, but it's 3 volts. And now we can plug it into the wall or the car. Now, I know what you're thinking. The power's out, right? What are you going to plug it into the wall for? There's, there's, there's no electric. If you have emergency generator, you can run this off of that if you've got power going in from the generator. Or if you have an emergency battery bank, you can run this off of that. Either one. So that will just extend and add versatility to this whole heater, this heating system here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You should try this out. If you've got a dog kennel like this with a dog, you should really think about using this in an emergency. Put your heater in and make it much, much safer for your house. Uh, please consider subscribing to my channel, Animal Man Survivor. And thanks a lot, guys. Be safe. Stay warm.